The good news is that behavior and behavior change is not as complicated as most people think. It's systematic. And there are ways to understand behavior that are pretty straightforward and simple, and I'm gonna share some of those with you today. There are 15 ways behaviors can change. There are not hundreds of behavior types, there's 15 ways. When we talk about health behavior change, people are mostly talking about long-term change, and this row, these are the five that represent different types of long-term change. I'm not gonna go into depth here, but I, what I want to explain to you is when it comes to long-term change, there's only two ways you can get it done. Number one, you can change your environment. So before, here's your environment, certain behavior, and then after, the changed environment changes your behavior. That's a reliable way. It also includes your social environment, before, after. <laughs> now, changing the environment is a reliable way to change your behavior, however it can be tricky, especially the social environment with families and coworkers and so on. So there's one other way of changing your behavior long term, and I'll give you a hint, it does not have to do with motivation. Surprise. Motivation actually applies to other kinds of temporary behavior change, but not long term. In other words, relying primarily on motivation to change your behavior long term is a losing strategy. And similarly for willpower. So if you you can take those off the table if you make the behavior change tiny enough. Now in this grid, this is where habits live, blue path. It's something familiar that you do from now on. And if you make that very tiny, like two push-ups, floss one tooth, and so on, it's very easy to repeat and make that become a habit. Think about it this way. You already know how to floss, floss all your teeth. That's not what you're lacking. What you're lacking is the automaticity of flossing. So you don't need to train flossing all your teeth. You need to train making it automatic. Now, in the persuasion boot camps that I teach, we geek out about this kind of stuff. And this is one of the crews with me up in the wine country doing it. You, we look at the sequences of behaviors that eventually land you here, the habit. We won't go in that kind of depth today, but what I do want to say, and this is a little bit controversial, is this puzzle is solved, and I'm gonna share the pieces with you, and I'm gonna share some ways that it got solved, and we'll see what you think. That there's a new way to create habits that is reliable and it's systematic. Now, when we look at health outcomes, bullseye, what do we wanna do? Well, things like lose weight, manage stress, and so on. But if you design for the outcomes, you're designing at the wrong place, you need to design for the behaviors that lead to the outcome. And if you take an issue like weight loss, there are many, many behaviors that can contribute to that outcome. Stress reduction, eating better, and so on. And I would propose that most of the behaviors that we need to do are habits. So of the 15 ways behaviors can change, the one that matters most to long-term health are habits. And as we create what I call these tiny habits. And we can't do it all at once. Little by little, we will then approach this health outcome in a very reliable way, in a way that doesn't regress, in a way that doesn't make you, oh, I give up, now I'm just gonna go back to how I was. Let me share a personal example, and I hesitated about including this, but I will. Um, in 2010, I got one of these scales, that's super high tech, and it can tweet out your weight, okay, so I set it up. So it's tweeting my weight. Um, so I started tweeting it out in 2010, and this is about a year, so you can see what's going on there. Not much change, up and down, up and down. What I learned was, number one, simply tweeting your weight didn't seem to have any effect on me, and I looked up others who had done it, didn't seem to have lots of an uh, impact. And number two, my Twitter followers hated it, so I stopped. <laughs> But I, I kept, you know, it was, I'd made it a habit of stepping on the scale. It was right there. A few months later, oops, going up. So at, <laughs> at one point, I thought, okay, I've been doing this thing called tiny habits. Uh, it's something I've, I've applied elsewhere. Now I'm going to apply it to weight loss because I want to lose some pounds. So after creating many, 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 many tiny habits, this is where I am this week. 
So that's probably the course of a year or so. So you can see no real change. And then putting together little by little these tiny habits that took root and would grow, I, I believe I've made a long-term change. Now we'll see five, 10 years from now, but it seems like these habits will be very hard to undo. So I put this out there. When you know how to create tiny habits, you can change your behavior and your life.